I'm Gaz, and this is Let's Play Rogue State. This game was gifted to me by the developers, and I guess you could say it's sort of a political decision simulator type game. Kind of similar to uh, Democracy 3, but of course this type of game goes back much further than that. Uh, I have played through the game once, but uh, I'm going to play this one a little bit differently, I think. So let's start a new game, and I'll start with creating my character, who will be President Gazabad. Okay, so, uh, the game starts out with a lot of things locked. We can unlock them through playing the game multiple times and uh, gaining experience points. Unfortunately, I do not look like I can unlock this just yet. I believe you unlock them from actually within the game. Uh, so maybe I'll be able to do that. I'm kind of interested in Hermit Kingdom and maybe Unstable Elements. Uh, they provide you basically different starting conditions. Uh, we'll just start a basic, normal game. Alright. As glorious leader of the newly formed People's Republic of Basenji, you elect to set your office in the royal palace of the late Tyrant King. Outside, hundreds of workers dismantle the blood-stained barricades installed by the Monarchists last year, another painful reminder of all that was lost in the war. Key revolutionary figures across the spectrum of political ideologies are now selfishly looking to be rewarded with appointments to inner circle cabinet positions. So, uh, here we begin by setting up our cabinet, and uh, we have five positions that we can fill and only four members to fill them, one of whom is Farouk. Farouk actually does not provide any benefits. You can see over here underneath the, uh, the different minister positions. By assigning a minister, we gain different bonuses. In this case, the finance minister will give us a treasury income of 3 million real, I believe is our country's uh, currency. But if we assign Farouk to that position, he will funnel 5 million a turn to his private account. So we don't really want to do uh, anything with him that's important. Um, I'm kind of thinking I want to shove him into intelligence minister because that seems to be the least damage he can do. He uh, makes intelligence breakthroughs 25% less likely. Now, the way I'm going to play this, I might actually want the intelligence. Reduces faction approval ratings by one. That is actually a big deal, especially later in the game. Poisons relations with the Americans. You know what? We'll have him as the foreign minister. Uh, the first time I played through this game, I played through as not really a rogue state at all. I was a very model citizen of the Middle East, and I was friends with absolutely everyone, and had approval rating, and I had no nuclear weapons, I was not a warmonger, I was fantastic. This game, I think I'm actually going to try and be a rogue state, and we're going to see how far I can get. I imagine it's not going to last very long. Uh, by playing the good guy, uh, I think that is easy mode. This one is probably going to be a little bit harder. So anyway, I'm going to assign Farouk to Foreign Minister because we don't need American relations all that badly. Um, however, that minus one per turn means that it is going to go down constantly. And that's important because uh, unlike, say, your citizens, there are four different factions of, of citizens. Uh, unlike those citizens whom you can increase your relations with every turn, I don't believe we have something like that with the Americans, so it's going to be more difficult. Anyway, we now have to worry about Finance Minister. That's an important one. We need income. That's a very big deal. I believe I will set a capitalist to be our Finance Minister. Um, the Defense Minister, boosting military's loyalty. That is going to be important for the way I'm going to play. Intelligence, again, uh, could be important. Communications approval with all factions, that's also important. So, of the three, at this point, well, I think, actually, maybe having the defense minister out would be, uh, oh, ooh, but there's a thing, um, foreign minister also actually applies itself to your relations with your neighbors and if you don't have a foreign minister that actually uh, approves of you then you are limited in the options you can have with your neighbors uh, so maybe we actually want to get you out of there and put you oh man Farouk just isn't good with anybody he's basically there just to, to add a handicap um, 
I, th I think by my actions I can increase my military's loyalty by myself. Now, I'm not sure what the defense minister actually does for me. Um, it might limit me in having my options if I don't... I, I honestly think the intelligence minister is going to be the most expendable, but since I plan on pissing people off, we might actually need that more than anything. Um, all foreign relations, plus one... Yeah, we, we definitely need a foreign minister. Um, we'll have... Probably not a liberal foreign minister, though, huh? Liberal faction leader? And, um... No, because we need a defense minister. We need someone who's going to... In yeah, we'll set a fundamentalist to be our defense minister. That's the kind of state I'm going to run. Um... So I would, I would have to have that, and then I would just... Uh, but the, the plus one to factions is very important, because you can get down to nubbins very quickly, and so just having the plus one allows you to just hang on. Ah, uh, these are all actually very important now for the way I want to play. See, if I was playing the good guy, I wouldn't worry so much about intelligence breakthroughs, because you can keep everyone happy and thereby limit the amount of uh, terrorism and... Uh, counter spying and all that stuff so I don't know basically we have one guy in three positions because Farouk is just gonna do bad things for everybody on the other hand maybe I should just go for minus one faction because I think I think we're gonna need that and then we'll have to just make you Uh, yeah, okay. Let's have him do intelligent... No, 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 no. We definitely need to know this. Faction approval. We'll just have to be very careful. This is going to be... This is going to be difficult. Okay. So, we'll go ahead and go through the tutorial, even though I've already gone through it. May as well. New arrivals to the People's Republic of Basenji may benefit from the in-game manual located here. Yes, it's got information. We'll probably have a look at that, or at least I will. Excellency, my name is Tariq Badur. As Parliamentary Chief of Protocol, it is my duty to ensure that your instructions reach our parliamentarians. I trust you have settled into your new office. May I offer some suggestions on our first steps to restoring order to Bajinji? Go ahead. Yes, please begin. Excellent. To start, there are two units of currency to be concerned with. One is our treasury fund. And the other is the loyalty of our parliament. We will need to rebuild basic infrastructure to begin. Click on the state infrastructure button. It seems the people are without water and sewage, and it will cost us treasury funds to restore it. When you are ready, click on the Restore Water and Sewage icon. Yes, so we are in the reconstruction phase. The civil war is done, the revolution is over. Now we have to provide basic things for all of our people and set up the infrastructure of our government, otherwise we can't do jack all. So, restore water and sewage. Ensure water and sewage is restored in the majority of the country. 15% increase in tax revenue. Uh, you'll see that little treasure chest next to it with the number. That is millions. So we just spent 10 million to restore water and sewage. Good. Now we will need some assistance from the international community to rebuild some of our infrastructure. Click on the Foreign Aid Workers button. Aid workers will arrive from non-governmental organizations to help manage labor shortages, provide humanitarian support, and assist with the reconstruction of critical buildings and infrastructure. So this one comes with some options. Some infrastructure purchases require you to make an immediate policy decision. You may only choose one of the two policy options presented. Choose between prioritizing medical and engineering relief now. So, uh, yes, we can choose to have a medical team or an engineering team. Now, the medical team means that we already uh, adopt a minus three million per turn policy to cover health care. Health care is important because while everyone's living in bombed out shelters and doesn't have basic services, it's very easy to catch the plague or whatever uh, illness is the major crisis in this game. Uh, engineering, however, immediately gives me military approval, but it also reduces the construction time for some of these that we have to wait. And that could be very important early on. So I think we can go engineering because we can set up healthcare 
later through other policies. Engineering will help remove debris, stabilize structures, and restore roadways. This will speed up the time needed to reconstruct Basenji's essential services and will assist the military in moving resources in and out of cities. Good. Finally, let's restore power to our population. It will cost us 30 million just to build a power infrastructure, ensuring electricity is restored in the majority of the country. It will increase tax revenue by 15%. Very good. You will see that none of the other state infrastructure developments can be unlocked this turn. So close this window and take a look at our policies. And now click on the policies button. Yeah, so here is what I was talking about. You can skip through him walking around the room. I will probably do that later on. Our economy is stagnant, and our workers feel exploited. May I suggest that for one of your first edicts, you implement a minimum wage. Nothing too extreme, or our capitalists will protest. Yes, yeah, so we have our four factions here. Patriots, capitalists, fundamentalists, and liberals. Um, I believe this starts out randomly, and it looks like our liberals are our most supportive group. Uh, capitalists, not so much. The cool thing is, when you hover over the Patriots, it shows you up there at the top the issues that uh, are most important to them. Likewise, the issues down here uh, also show you what you can change to affect them. Uh, we're doing fairly well right now, um, aside from the fact that our capitalists and liberals are uh, turning sour against me right away. But anyway, we need to implement a minimum wage, and uh, Right now you can see the effects of having no minimum wage. Labor rights and labor conditions are going down. However, the number of jobs is going up. Uh, we will, however, want to change that probably to a low minimum wage so that employers must pay a minimum wage to workers set at a level comparable to Iran, Ecuador, or Hungary. Um, setting it to the middle, of course, has no effects whatsoever, but uh, that's kind of important. You will see there, though, down at the bottom, uh, capitalists are now minus 5% per turn, whereas liberals are only minus 2% as we move it to the middle. Other policies, of course, can, uh, can help balance that, and that's sort of integral to the game. Next, let us open the doors to private enterprise and permit free trade zones. In time, this will surely grow our economy. So the free trade zone right now, with no free trade zones, we've got uh, bad GDP and corruption is rising. We can just turn that on. And now we've got good GDP, jobs are coming in, and corruption is going down. This also turns down uh, the disapproval of the capitalists, but it also lowers our approval with patriots. But uh, I'm okay with that, because as long as we're in the green, it doesn't matter. They will climb every turn, and our goal is, of course, to get 100%, or at least 80% for the endgame. Excellent. Keep a close eye on how much faction approvals are rising and falling every turn. If you find you are losing a faction support at a critical time, altering Basenji's public policies are a great way of regaining their confidence. That's enough for now. Close this window, and let's take a look at our budget. I am tempted to uh, change some more things, but while we're in the tutorial, if I do that, it has a tendency to break the game. So we'll just follow along for now. But, uh, well, I'll explain this later. Basically, whenever you're in a window and doing something, you want to do as many things as possible because of the, uh, the turns down here. He'll... Uh, Tariq will explain this a little bit later. Treasury and commodities. Raising taxes will lower your approval, but it may be necessary in the short term. I suggest raising taxes to 15%, if just for now. And uh, hovering over this, it's got the little tooltip. All we're going to lose is a little bit of approval. As you go up, though, it does have larger impacts. Like, it'll have uh, negatives on jobs, negatives on GDP. Uh, the game I just finished playing for myself, I had this all the way up to 30% taxes, and uh, I still had 100% approval with these guys, and that's just because of how policies work, as well as a little bit of a cheaty thing with Parliament and Cabinet, which I'll show off later. Anyway, 15% is a good choice. We now have an income of 8 million real per turn. I cannot exp we cannot export our goods yet because our industries are still in a state of disrepair after the revolution. Later, forming an export economy and ensuring you get the best possible price when trading with neighbors will be essential. For now, let's close this window and look at something else, if you say so. Uh, there are things, other windows here, but again, if I look at them right now, it'll break the tutorial. But uh, this is basically allowing me to see commodity prices, and this is allowing me to graft money to my own Swiss bank account. Or offshore bank account, whatever it is. Nonetheless, my own money. 
There are four time points in ether. The number of time points available can be seen on the clock in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. When all four time points are consumed, the turn ends and an event occurs. Events are rarely good news. Most actions, including building infrastructure, changing policies, calling neighbors, and moving military units, will cost time points. When our industries are restored in the state infrastructure menu, Pajinji will receive two resources. Those resources will appear here, in the resource menu. I suggest exporting goods that other countries will pay well for, and importing goods necessary to create manufacturing bonuses. Manufacturing bonuses are rewards conferred for having certain combinations of goods in your country, either produced domestically or imported from neighbors. Click on the resource menu that was just highlighted to see all the possible manufacturing bonuses. These bonuses will help you grow favor among the people over the long term. When you're ready, close this window and let me show you something else. So hopefully I will get oil. Uh, I did get lucky enough to get oil as one of my resources in my first playthrough of this game and that immediately gives you US relations but also two real per turn or two million per turn. Uh, it's also very good because you can just export it and people pay a lot of money for it. Everything else not so much but we do get bonuses. Um, hopefully we'll get uh, we'll get sheep or rams as the case may be because that allows us to work on several other th goods here. Um, sweatshops. Sweatshops are how we're going to make domestic money and so it might be important to have but we can always trade for these things as we go on. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. The people love Farouk so you need to keep him in your regime but we should keep a close eye on the loyalty of your parliamentarians. When faction approval drops, when your cabinet members get displeased or when we start to lose wars or run out of funds, that's when our parliamentarians' loyalties shift. Their loyalty is represented with loyalty points, that other currency. If you start seeing loyalty points drop, then something is seriously wrong with Pajinji. If loyalty falls too low, Farouk may attempt to push us out of power. For now, let's take a closer look at the parliament window. Try to fulfill the requests of cabinet ministers whenever possible and keep the people happy. Ensure Basenji is safe and stable and we will have nothing to worry about. Feel free to close this window. Yeah, so uh, we can see here that my current ministers are ambivalent towards me and uh, I do have, however, 60% of the parliament on my side. There are a few who are discontent and uh, Farouk here will never go above zero. He's just going to be a pain the entire time. Uh, once we get over 100% loyalty, uh, every excess amount of loyalty we get, or loyalty points that we get every turn, we can use to buy special things. And this is sort of the cheaty element of the game where we can basically just buy approval from everyone that uh, is upset with us. And so it, it helps, but um, it kind of takes away from the challenge. Not that I'm going to complain because we're going to piss off a lot of people this playthrough. I'll leave you to it now, Excellency. This is not everything there is to see and do, but with luck, you will figure out the rest yourself. You can always hit the buzzer if you are in need of a more fulsome report of the health of our beloved country. For now, I suggest advancing to the next turn sooner by clicking on the clock. I have every confidence in your leadership, Excellency. Well, first we have to answer the phone. Greetings, Your Excellency. Excellency. I am General Khalil Sadi Abu Jamal. And on behalf of Tajikistan, I wanted to be the first to welcome the liberation of the People's Republic of Basenji from the tyranny of the Solomon family. The Solomon regime was a threat to the whole region. That is why we provided your rebellion with the weaponry and training necessary to overthrow the tyrant. Once the transitional government has restored Basenji's infrastructure and industry, let us work towards restoring our trade relationship. Do not hesitate to contact me if there is any way Tajikistan can be of assistance to you. Thank you for your call. I am certain our two great nations will work together to bring great prosperity to the region. 
There is much work to be done, but I am grateful for your country's support. Uh, we're not going to talk about anything right now. I'll just end the call. Apologies, but I must go. Let us speak again later. Goodbye. Making decisions by talking to people uh, also takes up one of your quarter turns. Uh, before we end this episode, because I'm not going to make any major decisions until next episode, let's go ahead and read the encyclopedia. The encyclopedia will give me insight into not just aspects of the game, but also my neighbors. Okay, let's just start with Basenji here. The People's Republic of Basenji is a coastal, Middle Eastern state with a population of just over 4.6 million, consisting primarily of Basenjis to the north and west, and ethnic Karifi to the south. karifi basenji relations have been amicable for the past century, though Karifi view themselves as culturally distinct within Basenji. Until recent months, the Kingdom of Basenji was ruled with the support of the United States and other Western powers by the oppressive and corrupt Salman family for 67 years. Under King Salman, criticism of the government was outlawed, Tens of thousands were imprisoned without trial for minor offenses, and many more died from starvation. Last year, five police officers murdered a teenager over a minor dispute, and the resulting public outrage was enough to boil over a pot that had been simmering with frustration for decades. Inspired by the Arab Spring, the subsequent Basenji revolution was fast and violent. The military leadership largely refused orders to fire upon their own people, and only a few resisted the tidal wave of anti-monarchist rebellion. The immediate Salman family was captured months after the revolution began and were summarily executed for their crimes against the people. The monarchy was disbanded and the country was reforged as the People's Republic of Basenji. True democracy was promised for the people, but the Revolutionary Council has entrusted you to ensure post-war stability for the next five years until free elections can be held. So I guess I'll just uh, go through these in time and uh, we'll just have a look at uh, various aspects of the game. But, for now, I'm going to end this one here, and I will see you in the next episode.